eve of a world champion being crowned, but still the title remains a long way off. There are 46 racks to be won, many more than that to play, across the four fences yet to be negotiated in pursuit of the game's ultimate accolades. And a different game it is now, Jeremy, because we have the shot clock. Explain to us how that works and how it's going to affect things over the coming days. Yeah, it's a 30-second shot clock. Each player gets one extension a game. It's going to change a lot of things, and it's going to it's going to be the players Rack that have dealt with it before one, in this situation. Mr. Zelensky to break. Uh, in the biggest moments, that's really going to shine. I don't really see it being a big problem for these two guys. Been in this situation before. And this opening break may not be exactly what he wanted, leaving a 1-9 combination after a dry break. And, you know, we'll see. There is an open pocket for the one as well. And a rare smile and, and, and a guy that stays super focused, uh, Chang Jung Lin, coming into the arena. That's a good sign if I, in my opinion anyways, very relaxed. And I agree with Zelensky uh, with his opener saying that when this guy's in form, and he's playing a lot of nine ball pool. I got him top five, eight players in the world. Extension, please. The unmistakable sound of Shakespearean actor John Lehman, our referee. Yeah, you can see him sizing up the combo just because look how difficult the four eight. If the four was open, I think he just tries to pocket the one and run the ball. So. Nothing easy here to start queuing over the four. Yeah, a little quick with the transition there and didn't get the cut on the one he desired. May not have left anything too easy, though. Just for people who may not have seen nine ball before and are joining us for this world championship. So long as you hit the lowest numbered ball remaining on the table, any pot is legal. So that includes the nine ball. And if you pop that in a combination, even if it's at the beginning of the rack, you've won the rack. So that was what he was attempting there, the one nine combination. Yeah, you don't have to call the pocket either. I mean, these guys, they don't get many flukes, but it does happen here and there. And a real nice opening shot there from Zelensky having to elevate the cue. And he's got to make a pretty tricky shot here on the three as well. High powered match is what you expect from these two. A lot, you know, the, the big frames, right? Carry a lot of easy power and also a deft touch. Well, he got down and shot that pretty quickly. So I think Zelensky uh, pretty comfortable as well. Very relieved to find himself Attention, back at the table. Would have returned to his chair after the dry break. Yeah. I'm aware that he's perhaps handed Chang a chance to win the rack immediately. Yeah, he's stressing over the shot a little bit. Didn't get the exact position, but to come across on the on the five is very natural, of course, and I like his chances on the paint. One thing about Zelensky. That I've, I've seen, and it's very similar to, you might say, Ruiz. Once he makes this decision, he's not down on the ball a ton. Just goes with his gut and, and swings the cue, and you got to like that. Yeah, don't have a chance to second guess yourself. Yeah, a little think long, think wrong kind of situation for some players. And it starts above when you're up off the ball. When you start to question what you're doing there, it kind of lens and sticks with you when you get down on the ball and quick work here from a, a very dicey rack to open this match. A dry break, a horrible way to start. Looked like it was going to cost him a lot. But in the end, everything has turned out in his favor and Viktor Zelinski is going 1-0 up here. Against Chang Yong Min in the last 16 of the World Championship. Different setup now. We're down to just three tables, and we've got the seats all around the main table here. Traveling conditions very difficult with all the snow and the ice, so that may have limited the crowds a bit, but still a good turnout, which we expect to grow over the weekend. 22 years of age from Poznan, which is just over 200 miles away from here. And as you see there, he was the youngest player ever to win a title on the Euro Tour. That was in Italy. 
when he was just 16 back in 2017. Those events not of the same prestige or set up at all as these matchroom tournaments. But a lot of the top players play in them, and they're a very good sign that you're playing well if you can win one. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, the youngest to ever win it, and that shows you the talent that he possesses anytime you're young like that. It's not going to be, you just can't gain the experience. The game is too vast to do so. So that goes a lot with ability. He was playing on the Euro Tour from the age of 14. And when he won that title as a 16 year old, he beat former world champion Daryl Peach in the quarters. And then in the last two rounds, saw off Dennis Grabber and Mario He, both of whom are still in this championship at the last 16 stage and lost a total of three racks across those two matches. So absolutely powered to the line, just as he powered through that opening rack after the let off from Chang. Rack number two. Our current score is 1-0 in favor of Mr. Zelinsky. Mr. Zelinsky, to break. Yeah, you mentioned a name there. We'll get to that in a moment, but a guy I think uh, might sneak through this event a little bit. All right, much better with the break off there. He's going to get a nice shot on the two. He's going to have to work the cue ball, but Mario, he took a loss early in this event, and that's the last time we really talked about him because he was the biggest name to take that early loss. But he's kind of snuck his way through, and he's won some big matches being behind as well, and I think he's gaining confidence, and we saw him have some nice results last year. And he's still one of those guys on the fence looking for a big win. Yeah, beat Ko Ping Chung, 11-9, late last night. And we'll be playing John Mora, who also had a late night win over Jason Shaw. That one coming up a bit later today. Yeah, big comeback against Kachi is the one that I, I got to watch a little bit. And he did everything he had to do to beat the big Albanian. Now Chang has been in all kinds of matches this week where he led, had big leads, and he lost them. Had to play a fellow countryman last night, coping Yi. That's always difficult. Yeah, well, Zelinsky's passage to this stage has been far from straightforward. Didn't have any close finishes in the first couple of rounds, but last 64 yesterday, 11-9 against Mickey Krause of Denmark, and then the same score against Moritz Neuhausen of Germany last night, but he was 8-3 down in that one. Yeah, and Moritz, who took that loss, and it's always hard to take when you have that big lead in such a big championship, but he's a really, really good player at a young age. We're, we're going to see a ton of him in the future years. Poland is renowned at the moment for having so many good players on the tour. Germany as well, we've seen over the last 12 months, the contingent has really grown. We know about Joshua Filler, obviously, but so many others now have marked themselves out with real potential. Well, if you were at the European Open last year, there were a lot of names you've never heard of that beat a lot of big guns, and uh, that's no accident. You know, maybe an accident when it happens once, maybe twice, but it was several matches last year in Fulda. Zelensky getting on with it here in rack two. Yeah, Victor Zelensky had the dry break in the opening rack. And ever since then, everything has gone his way. And with that break and run, he leads 2-0. Now let's have a look what else is going on around the arena. Down to three tables in operation. This is Alban Ocean, last year's runner-up, two-time winner. And 1-0 uh, up against Mateusz Sniagotsky, who's one of three players from the host nation to get to this stage. Indeed, Poland and Austria, the joint most represented countries in this last 16 with three players apiece. And yeah, coping Wu Kun Lin, also going 1-0 up we'll be playing against John Max Lechner. Another of the Austrian trio. And Wu, probably the name you're not going to talk about a lot from Chinese Taipei with the Co brothers here, Chang here. But uh, he may have played as steady to get here as anyone from Chinese Taipei. Yeah, and uh, all of the Co brothers out now. Two of them were beaten last night. One of them by Chang Young Lin, as we Rack were saying. Three. 
current score is 2-0. So, all going to plan so far Zielinski. for Victor Zelinski. Mr. Zelinski, to break. A little low on the ball there, but it's going to work out. With the two near. This part of the game, you know, it may not be as clean looking as Chang when we do get to see Chang get through some racks and who knows when that'll be. But but Zelensky, this is where he can certainly keep up with Chang. Now, if they get into a tactical battle, you got to favor Chang a little bit. But uh, if it stays offensive, which is usually the case for the guys who win the matches and hoist the trophy, uh, he's right in there and uh, he can certainly win. Now looking at a route, two rails between the five and nine, back to the center of the table. May have to take a long shot on the four, we'll see. Oh, he caught the nine, so big mistake early. And that's what happens with those kind of shots when you're hitting a line. When you swing kind of quick on it sometimes, Attention, uh, you're really maybe not as dialed in on it as you should be. And now a big shot. He's obviously gonna have to take a long one on the four, but now, most important knocking this three in. This is where the ball could hang because it's more of a stun and kind of creates a ball that you have to hit a little bit better. And this is the good thing about Zelensky as well. He'll take a little more time. Seems like when it when it's needed. Sweet stroke and very settled from distance. Not good that he left himself that test, but in the end, it's turned out to his advantage because making the Paulton stain on the four just gives him another little early boost here. Yeah, he didn't have to, he didn't want to have to take that long shot, of course, awkward queuing. But, you know, dealing with a situation early and being able to slow down and gather yourself, that's going to really reap rewards if he continues on in this event because more situations are going to arise. It's almost like subtle things you tell players that they don't realize uh, what's making them better just kind of without it being so conscious. And now, whew, how big was that mistake looking from Chang on that missed combo in game one? The last time we've seen him. Zelensky took the opening rack from there. A couple of breaking runs to follow. And very swiftly, the hometown favorite is leading 3-0. Thank you. Two-nil then for Wu Kun Lin against Max Lechner. Alban Ocean still one nil up against Mateusz Sniagotsky. I say hometown favourite, as I was saying, Zelinski is from about 200 miles away, but they've really taken him to their hearts here. He is seen as the most likely home winner of the title. Quarter finalist at the World Championship last year was beaten by the eventual winner, Shane Van Boning. Gave him a real battle on that Saturday night in Milton Keynes. And as you see, winner of the International Open back in 2018. That's the big event in Virginia towards the end of the year. And he was absent for a while with the whole COVID situation. And it was just great, Jeremy, to see him back on the international stage in some of the events last year. Yeah, made a little transition in his game because, you know, when staying home, he had to play a little more Chinese eight ball, kind of changed his fundamental touch. I think it's back more to the pull swing. We'll just see when he gets to use it. Zelensky won't lay off the gas here. Right, he knows four, after that match last night, there was no lead in safe. In favor of Mr. Zelensky. Mr. Zelinski to break. All right, what's the purple five going to do? It did open up. So a difficult rack. And my opinion, just watching a few things through the week, 
close to questionable on the speed of the break on that one in my the balls you know didn't move very much i mean we've seen some questionable uh warnings and uh i think that one was right in line it's a tough call for the referees to make but we've seen it a couple of times during the week as you say you know alex pagalion very early in one of his matches got pulled up over the soft break and is that a difficult call to make, but sometimes it needs to be done. And look at that stat so far. It tells you everything you need to know about this. Chang Young Lin's only shot was attempting a pot through a combination. Yeah, Linsky well, has potted everything since. Well, that was center cut, too. And very comfortable so far. Slept well last night, it appears. And I don't think Zelensky purposely tried uh, to maybe lighten up on the break. Why would you with the success you just had the last two? But he has a unique kind of style. When he gets down on the ball, he gets the cue moving a lot quickly. And during the break, he has a lot of a lot of speed, you might say, on his pre-strokes. And then when you do that, it's easy to let up a little bit coming through. So looks like a safety here. Maybe the pink into the purple, bringing the cue ball behind the nine. He may just come back up on the eight. I don't, I'm not sure what angle he has. Yeah, it looks like he can come on the black with the cue ball. And he wanted to get the four past the side a little bit, making the kick shot pretty difficult. Or at least not that easy, let's say. Well, this really shows us why the game is so psychologically tough. Chang has had one shot. It wasn't easy. And that's all he's done so Attention, far, but please. he finds himself returning to the table, 3-0 down, and in a tough spot here on the four. Yeah, it's a game of runs with the best players in the world in the winter break format, and the pressure is there. That's why the winter break is so good. Now, this kick shot, I think, will be pretty light. A lot of ways with the 5-8 there, you can kind of leave something kind of goofy for your opponent. Oh, wow, look at that. That was the way to hit it, it seems. And he held for a tough cut shot on the five, but he will attack. Quite some way to break your duck in a match in terms of balls potted. Well, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. As great as these players are tactically, I think the game's going to evolve to something super aggressive, you know, even more than we've seen in past years. The players are going to become even better at pocketing the ball from distance, and uh, they're going to realize that. You're going to have to put your your opponent in the chair, and that's just how you win tournaments. And maybe one of his strongest suits is his mental game, not being phased by what his opponent has done or even what he's done, leaving it behind both bad and good. I couldn't agree more. He seems to just put the context completely out of his mind and approaches the shot objectively. We saw that in the quarterfinal last year. Every time it looked as though Van Boning was taking control of the match. Chang still looked to be playing as if it was the first rack, and he just hung on and hung on, and in the end, as so often last year, and again last night, Van Boning finished so strongly. Well, that's why your process is so important, Michael, because... You're never going to forget it's the World Championships. We're human. You're never going to forget it's Hill Hill. But you lighten it a little bit when you have such a solid process and a task at hand each ball. He's hooked on the four, managed to pot it, and did the rest from there. So Chang Young Lin off and running. Zelinsky leads 3 1. Foul. Well, I was going to say that Chang's not going to worry about a warning. He always breaks him pretty firm, and he got away from him there. Awful kiss on the cue ball. And after getting on the board, exactly what he didn't want. Well, we'll see how long this takes this rack but very open and position on the two pretty easy the three over the corner the real work maybe the three to the four he's going to probably look with the five there probably not come twice with the cue ball of two rails 
maybe he's going to set up to draw between the six seven that window to play the four in the upper left. It's kind of the shot I like. Um, you can afford a hair of a bump on the six or seven as well. Main thing is here, don't worry so you don't overcook it. Just kind of creep it through the six seven. There you go. Well, you picked that out as the key moment, and now that he's come through it with flying colors, great chance for 4 1. Still lots going on here, though. He's got to swing the ball a couple rails. He can't come one rail so easily because the eight, that's what he would like to do to get that angle on the five, which is needed. So he's going to kind of stun draw and probably take a little more distance Tension, on please. the five. Doesn't have a ton of angles, so the cue ball shouldn't move. If he does go two rails, it shouldn't be moving too fast. Where he's at now with the cue ball would be just fine. Just by getting this far, Zelinski has matched his best ever run in the World Championship. Back in 2018, he got to this last 16 stage and was beaten by Alban Ocean. Well, some big events over the last years going to help him here. Ooh. Ooh. So just kind of from nowhere, I think a little fortunate that failed, but a lot more work now on the seven to the eight. Oh, my. Yeah, these are big moments. Uh, you get ball in hand after the break and get through the tough part of the rack. Kind of maybe took that six for granted. Definitely got down and shot it a little quicker than his norm. Yeah, he had the dry break in the opening rack, but look, that happens. So really, this has to go down. It's the first thing he's done wrong in this match. Yeah. Well, first miss, but the six was not so so hot itself. I get right? you, yeah. yeah. But the whole juncture of running right. out of position and then missing Tension, the seven. Please. Hadn't done anything wrong in the whole contest up until then. And what a gift, really, for Chang. I doubt he comes past the side here. There's no real reason to. It could get you in trouble anyways. Yeah, just take the shot. There's a player, of course, that, in America. And, of course, if you know Poole, you know the name Buddy Hall, mm. the rifleman. And they always said he had the best cue ball, played the patterns better than anyone. And we all compare. Chang kind of to the Asian Buddy Hall, also who was a big man in stature. But just super efficient. Can also come with the shot. So Chang had the dry break. Zelinski could have, really should have, led 4 1. Instead of which, his lead is reduced to a single rack. It's 3 2. Let's go over to table two. Just a couple of moments ago, this is the Alban Ocean Mateusz Sniagotsky match. And we told you Sniagotsky had closed to 2 1, but Ocean won the next rack. And here he is now taking rack five to go 4 1. And this is classic Alban Ocean, isn't it, JJ? Struggle a bit, not be at his best form in the early rounds, and then just move up a gear when we get to the business end. Yeah, and some players, Alex Laley and I talked about it are players that really rely on the stroke, the timing of the swing. Uh, and when they get that down, that's when they really shine. And that match yesterday with Alvin, that, like he said, alarm clock went off down 4-0. He definitely found it, and that's a good sign for the Austrian. And another Austrian, Max Lechner, has just won the fifth rack to close to 3-2 down against Wu Kun Lin. Yeah, many wouldn't consider Max an underdog in that match. And, just the way the event has gone for for Wu. I kind of felt like Wu may be a slight favorite, even though he didn't have the name of, of Legner. And that's just here and now. Can't say that about the entire year, of course. And Wu Kun Lin comfortably seen off Noyuki Oi. Former world semifinalist, 11-4 in the last round. Rank number six, our current score is 3 to 2 in favor of Mr. Zelinski. Okay, so from 3 0 down, Jonglin Chang now breaks with a Keep chance break. to draw level. Yeah, and I don't think you'll see him back off just because he 
you know, had a dry break. The kiss on the cue ball is one thing, but I think it'll take a few more mishaps on the break to make any changes. And that's more what he wanted. Another threat with the cue ball, though, and what's the two going to do? It looks like it may get behind the seven. Oh, this is not going to be nice. You can see a little grimace there because all these players know if they have to take on the push out, they're an underdog in the game. Now, this is we're going to get tactical here, so we'll see how it develops. Tell us, Jeremy, for the benefit once again of people who might be tuning into pool for the first time for this World Championship, what the push out is. So the push out after the break only. Uh, the player at the table, whether the breaker or not, they have an option to roll the cue ball out anywhere on the table. They don't have to hit a ball. They can. There's no real foul involved besides scratching. Oh, that's way light, way light. But uh, anyways, uh, the incoming player has the option to take the shot or pass it back. It's a very big part of professional pool. And there's often a lot of risk involved trying to guess what way the opponent is going to respond and often he can surprise you with the choice he makes. All right, he's not even going for the shot here. He's going to take a safety on and that is also a hair light, I would say. Looks like there's a gap between the nine and seven, at least for a decent, some kind of decent kick shot coming behind the two. This is where Extension Chang please. wishes the seven wasn't there. That that's really maybe holding the cue ball from coming behind balls on this kick shot. We'll see. So I'd probably play the two to the left long rail up near the five. Oh, he got it thin, so he's going to leave a tough long shot. Maybe he couldn't get up behind it as much as he wanted. Pretty good effort. And just for now, knowing Chang so well, watched him so much, love his game. I think he's uh, thinking about the shot clock a hair just a little bit. I think he'll settle in and it won't be a problem. But he may slide behind the three here. Very interesting here. A lot of these situations. Is he going to look at the cut on the two? Because Chang will stay aggressive, like most of the best. This is thin from some distance, though. Yeah, needed a bit of luck there. Didn't look likely to get it, and I don't think he has. And again, I kind of feel like the shot clock's a little on his mind on making a decision. You got to realize where the big moment's at. You have one extension a game, and it's, it's there to be used. You may have noticed sitting just behind Chang Yong Lin there, Mieszko Fertunski, I think, is sitting in the audience, one of the. Extension. Extension, please. Strong Polish contingent. There he is. Yeah, didn't have the tournament he wanted. Thirteen Polish players, more than any other country, started out in the field of 128. I uh, caught the five. I'm not saying that's the worst thing in the world. He wanted an easier shot on the three, but at least he put the five, you know, in a good spot to get at. Speaking of five, that's the number Alban Ocean has reached against Mateusz Sniagotski. Five one now. Well, the serene progress of the early racks is starting to feel like a distant memory. Yeah, you kind of wonder on some of these misses, but. Uh... You know, it's the World Pool Championships early in the match, early in the day as well.
Chang has never won this world championship, but he was in the final in 2019. Beat some very good players to get there. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, Casper Matakainen, Lu Hai Tao in the last three rounds to get to that title match. And was in a strong position against Federal Gorst at 8-5. Later led 9-7. Lost the next four racks, though. <coughs> and then they effectively traded racks one for one from there to the finish line. As Gorst became champion, 13-11. Yeah, the shot here you can't take your eye off of. And I like him digging into the cue ball versus rolling this. Yeah, much better strike there. And, the, and did you see a little more time taken before he shot it? Yeah. I, I, think, I think he needs to just settle in with the shot clock a little bit. So, miss on the three from Zielinski. He was 3-0 up, but now they're level. Yeah, we'll see how Zielinski can take on a couple of mistakes that really has kept uh, Chang in it early. Let's have a look at the prize money on offer. Goes up very quickly over the weekend. Everyone who's got to this stage is already on $6,000, but you can Come away with 10 times that by the end of tomorrow. Quarterfinals, 10,000, 17 and a half for the semis, and then $30,000 if you get to the final. But so much money at stake in that last match of the championship. You can double your money and walk away with $60,000. And of course, every dollar earns you a world ranking point. And we know how important they are now. Francisco Sanchez were ease top of the list since his US Open win. Shane Van Boning was number one for most of last year. and. He'll go back to number one if he wins the championship. That would be something, wouldn't it? SVB against FSR in the final, knowing that the winner not only is world champion, but also world number one at the end of this. Yeah, there'd be all kinds of stories there. Uh, two of the top players from last year, that's that's for sure. And two explosive Frank players seven, as well. We are all tied at three games apiece. Mr. Young Lin to break. All right, Chang with a little more successful break in the last. Trying to get his first lead. He's getting a lot of stressful kisses on the cue ball, I'll tell you. Got a nice kiss there, though, didn't he, to send the two over that corner pocket. And the cue ball fell underneath, so even though the two close to the corner, nothing too easy here, and, and position a little tricky as well. He may take on the bank here, we'll see. Oh, this is better than I thought. Subtle with a lot of side spin there. Started his campaign with a 9-2 win over Jonas Kvalsund Hansen of Norway. He's uh, had some close battles since then. And just as we watch him here try to go in front, we can also see Albin Ocean two-time champion, just a few balls away, perhaps, from leading 6-1 against Mateusz Sniagotski. Yeah, big shot there from Alvin from some distance to keep that lead kind of building. And this would be four racks in a row for him. First time we've heard the beeps, and that's at five seconds with the shot clock. Gotten a little odd here. He's got to get into the ball if he wants to come above the six. He may come two rails just getting by the six for a cut shot in the upper left. Looks like he wants to play from Extension underneath, please. so he's got to gain a little bit of an angle to get his, you know, the premium on the brown seven after shooting the six. It's not necessary. It'll just be, make things a little easier. Well, looks like he's coming above it. 
peeled the cue ball nicely with a little right side check. Alban Ocean looking very sharp then over on table two, six one in front. And if he keeps going like that, he could earn himself a nice long gap before his quarter final this evening. All helps in these frenetic days when you're playing every session for as long as you stay in it. Yeah, well, these players aren't going to let up. There's been too many matches, not only they've been involved in, but a lot of great comebacks. So barring something very unexpected, Chang is going to run out from the break for the first time. And from 3-0 down, he's now leading by four racks to three. Over on table three, Max Lechner didn't get off to a great start against Wu Kun Lin, but it's all quite different now. And just a couple of moments ago, here he is, drawing level. Yeah, well, we all make mistakes, but I haven't seen any easy ones from Wu all week, and I've seen a couple here early after a 3 nothing lead. Those two are playing for the possible prize of a quarter final against Shane Van Boning, the defending champion. He, of course, still has to get past Duong Quoc Huang of Vietnam. That'll be the next match up here on the main table at the conclusion of this one. So started off looking so sharp, Zelinski, but a couple of concerning moments for him since then as this has all turned around against him. Yeah, we'll see how well he can you know, kind of mentally handle it. Because he's breaking the balls exceptionally well. He's getting shots. Break number eight. Karen scores four to three. Yeah, and for all the Mr. talk about Zelinski and what a good Jolene. player he is, he's not been out here Mr. in this Jolene. sort of environment all that often in these big matchroom events. Throw in all the expectation there's been on him going into this championship, spearheading the home contingent. And it's an interesting test for him. Chang, 4-3. Wow, and really unloading on the rack. One of the few guys that can do that. Shane, of course, the premium in that, that category. FSR, another one that doesn't back off on the cut break. He's got a thin two ball to the side, but I think he will shoot it. And he looks like he can get by the six and track a couple rails at the three. You can and it's see the break and runs we've had. Sorry, Jeremy Chang oh. having his first of the match in the previous rack. Yeah, and I was going to say with the seven there, kind of, I think almost impossible to really miss this two ball. If you catch it a little thick, the seven's got the co the point covered up, and it should kiss in. So I think even though it looks very difficult, a little bit of a fooler. Watch out two rails in that side pocket where he's standing with the cue ball. Wow, how thin was that? And went from thin to thinner, it looks like, Michael, on this red three. Wow, that ball just crept in the hole. Thought he'd get by that six ball we talked about. Attention, please. 23, the number in brackets after his name. That's his seeding. His actual world ranking at the moment is number 27. I wouldn't mind betting that this time next year, the number after his name will be much lower than that. Yeah, what's he doing here? I don't, I don't know what he, wow, really nice. And it's really nice because you know you're not getting that great on the four, you know? So mentally, it's like I gotta at least make another great shot. I'm making a great shot to play safe. You know, not the mindset you want when you're taking on such a tough shot. We saw him attack early on a thin two ball. Don't think he's going to play safe here either. Watch out, seven ball, the cue ball. Uh, and he overcut the last one. This one was a little better attempt, but 
So the thin ones has got have gotten Chang so far. Just to clarify, when I said it will be lower, I meant the number, not the ranking. I think he'll oh, move absolutely. up from that Attention, position. Please. He's definitely a better player than that. Players have been earning points towards this new world ranking system since the beginning of last year. They're all still adding. Come the end of 2023, we'll have our first full two-year base list. And then from the start of next year, points will start coming off once they've been on there for two years. Oh, nice strike there. The speed looks like he's behind the nine, though. Upsetting. Hit the ball well. Just a little bit off, and it doesn't take much. You knock in the four to one side of the pocket, it really uh, has a big effect on the cue ball speed. Wu Kun Lin back in front at 4-3 now against Max Lechner on table three. Yeah, Lechner missed an eight ball there and left a pretty easy play. Well, as aggressive as Wu has played in this match, excuse me, uh, Chang has played in this match. Don't think you're going to see that here. He's got to just play the five back down. You could try, could try to get, you know, cute and hold him up behind the six, but easy to sell, sell out a shot. And he hit it too thick. He's made some, uh, some errors with the cue ball you just don't see very often. One man who's not making too many errors today is Alban Ocean. It's seven one now against Mateusz Niegotski. That's, to me, one of the big advantages of the taller guys, uh, the taller players, is they, you know, the longer arc, uh, they seem to just get to swing from distance uh, a little cleaner and still get a lot on the cue ball. I guess the seven goes in the side here. This doesn't look like the side pocket I would want to shoot at, but he doesn't seem too upset. Victor Zelinski really needed this. Back-to-back -back break and runs carried him to 3-0. He then lost the next four, but he's back on level terms now. It's 4 all for the last 16 of the World Pool Championship. Rack number nine. You might notice that we are currently tied at four people games sitting in the main eight. arena has dropped a bit since the Mr. start Zielinski. of the match. That's because Great. a lot of them have gone out to look at some of those other tables. And if you want to see the action on tables two and three, it's all available on Matchroom YouTube channels throughout this great championship. Really entertaining so far, JJ. Absolutely, Michael. And always so much going on at the pro events with the vendors and different things. So the fans will get out and enjoy that as well. But they'll be back. Oh, he took again. I thought he hit him a little lighter. Not so much questionable as far as that time as maybe a warning. But as far as being successful on the break, his first two after winning game one seemed to me had a, not a lot more speed, but definitely a, a little more crunch. And he's left a combination. It is long distance, but he won't pass on this one. Zelensky's had five breaks and two of them dry. Now the thing here is I don't think he's going to elevate the cue. That would make the combo very missable. So he's got to kind of hit it light to hold position on the one. The one should trickle off the five and he should have the one on the right side after. Oh, he hit it with some speed. So he was gambling to get a shot here. Yeah, I thought that was a, a, a little bit of a stretch with so many balls there and so much traffic. I thought he would roll this. Can't blame him, obviously, being a ways away from the ball. Mateusz Niagotsky was a quarter finalist at the European Open in Germany last summer. It doesn't look likely at the moment that he's going to reach that stage here because Alban Ocean, who was the winner of that tournament, now leads him 8-1. Get a look and see if that one passes the two. 
interested to see. Oh, yes, it does, but not the entire pocket. But from some distance, you're going to see the skills from Zelensky attack. Now, funny, a lot of times you want to hit this with like a center ball down on the cue ball like he's doing. Oh, he rolled it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm really surprised he rolled that, usually to a portion of the pocket. The guys like to carry the cue ball with speed. That way it seems a little more accurate. It's a four all in this match and looks like it's about to be the same story on table three. Max Lechner just a few balls away from drawing level again. Lechner, of course, was runner up in the US Open back in October in Atlantic City. And Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, very close. Yeah, he's going to leave a gap here, so. Nothing easy, of course, but with the 4 7 there, you figure chain to, to hit his target with the cue ball and miss the mark by a little piece. And I think for Lechner, the interview the other days, you know, he was very happy in one of his matches there after the interview and always happy when you win. But I still don't think he's played his best pool yet. So if he can put it together, maybe he makes a run at that, that final like he did last October. Attention, please. Okay, I th think he may bank the one away, try to use the two to hold the cue ball. Otherwise, it'd be running off the left side of the one. Watch him go the rail and try to use the two to hold the cue ball behind the six. Nice shot. So decisions. The thing is, if you want to make a jump shot, you want to you want to have shape. So I wouldn't doubt he, he passes on the jump here, especially with the four, seven, eight, nine. There are lots of ways to get safe here on this kick shot. And it shouldn't be one that has a lot of speed. He's not trying to get lucky here. He's trying to contain. He's not going to like this. And I think the shot clock got him a little bit there with the beeps, pulled the trigger maybe a little more speed than I thought. He's definitely been struggling to adjust to it, hasn't he? No yeah. question about it. Speaking of struggling, that's been the story of Mateusz Niagotski's day, but he could win this rack against Alban Ocean on table two. One of the nicest lads you could ever meet, Mateus. Yeah, very soft-spoken guy. And is this going to get there or is it going to hit the three? Uh, it's going to be a little upsetting from Zelensky and Mateus. He's just got to realize he can put some racks together and uh, to try and mount this comeback. A long road, but comeback has to start somewhere. And you feel like he has to really put some racks together just just because how how sound Alvin is tactically, right? Okay, a simple safety here. Didn't really try to bring the cue ball up onto the three six. Now here he'll take the jump on because he can see a reward if he if he buries it. Usually the type when you miss it, you overcut it a little bit. Oh, he hit a sweep. You can never tell, of course, but the signs early on. This is going to remain a close contest and down to a very tight finish. Always the possibility someone's going to pull away, but it just has that feel about it at the Attention, moment. Please. Yeah, and you wonder, you know, Zelensky started off so well. You don't figure him to fade, really, but he kind of needs to get that gear back a little bit of no mistakes, and we really haven't seen the best of Chang yet. And amazing those jump shots, Michael. We used to do that with a full cue, or playing cue back in the day. Hard to believe, huh? Yeah, so when would you say the jump cue started to become the norm? Uh, the norm, I would say more uh, where 
you know, most every player started to carry it because you could have tournaments where you could use it. Maybe the mid mid 90s. They were as early as the late 80s, I believe, as far as a product. Look how tight this is. So this will be a test. There are some tournaments still where you're not allowed to use a jump cue. Yes, a, correct, few, a few, a yeah. few, yeah. But the thing is that with the technology and of course the players themselves training on every facet of the game. Back then we never thought that it would uh, become such a weapon in the game itself. So, so many rollouts now and situations to, to where the jump um, decides matches at times. All right, does he come between the seven, eight, kind of near that left side pocket? And the funny thing is Chang hasn't even used an extension yet, has he? It's in this rack? Period in the match. I don't recall an extension. I think he did use one. Oh, okay. I just don't recall seeing it. Or John Lehman announcing it, rather. Hard to miss John's announcements. That's right. So Chang led 4 3. In all probability, he's going to lead again. shown some of what we talked about prior to the match but really hasn't put it together uh, for any type of multiple racks and the former runner up in this world championship gets his nose back in front at 5-4 in this race to 11. no change on the other tables Still 8-2, 12 in Ocean over Mateusz Sniagotski and 4-all between Max Lechner and Wu Kun Lin. So let's have a look at some of the key moments again in that ninth rack. This is the jump. This was the main moment, really, of the whole thing. Yeah, he still had to make some nice shots. The 3 to the 4, a tight 4 by the 7, and then very efficient afterwards. Someone who feels like he's been around a long time, started doing well in events on the Asian Tour about 15 years ago. He's been a multiple semi-finalist at the World Cup of Pool. Zelinski, so on the other hand, didn't really make the impact we were expecting him to at all on the very biggest events last year, matchroom tournaments, as it were. Didn't make single elimination at either the UK Open or the European Open or indeed in this World Championship. Did get to the last 64 of the US Open, but got no Open further. Our current score is 5 4 A comparable event to some extent is the International Mr. Open. Late in the Yong year, he did get to the final of that. Yong Lin, to break. Yeah, of course, our two biggest are the US Open and the biggest here with the world title, but it's all about the fields for these guys when they get accomplished, you know, wins and accomplishments. And, Oh, watch out, cue ball. Foul. Yeah, and that's just the stressful part of the game that's, that's going to be a part for a long time with the cue ball moving across the table. You know, to the average spectator that has certainly played pool, almost all of them have in America one reason or, or time, and you don't realize that's that it's, it's very similar to golf. You know, you get to where you're in form and you're wondering how can you fall out of form, but it's just That's that dynamic of a game. Thank There's you. so much going on. And the difference in pool and golf is, you know, you play head up matches continuously through the year, so your opponent has a lot to do with how you finish. Yeah, and then when you do start struggling with your game in both, you wonder how you're ever going to play well again. Exactly. That works both ways. As you saw there, that was Chang's second scratch off the break in the five that he's had okay he's overcooked this a bit so he's gonna have to play a little bit of a touchy shot to the five the seven wasn't there it's always a ball that's causing problems if the seven wasn't there drawn across with the nine there's a little touchy as well the five doesn't go by the six in the corner 
So if football is a game of inches, as they say in American football, pull is uh, millimeters, I guess. And here is exactly what I was talking about. You can take on the five in the side, not the type of shot you want to put speed on, but no position. It's been a good five minutes or so for the Austrian contingent because Alban Ocean is now 9-2 in front of Matthias Sniagotsky. And Max Lechner has gone in front now against Wu Kun Lin at 5-4. Oh, really nice there. A great recovery. Probably, even though it didn't look like much, one of the better shots of the match. Like I was talking about earlier, as this game sport's still growing and continues to grow with all the great work from Matchroom and everyone involved. Extension, please. I think you're going to start to see players pocket balls. Um, I don't know if you want to call it at a rate or, or, or a skill level, you might say, that uh, we've never seen before. Now, this is a lesson for you, Jeremy. Don't get the cue ball cleaned unless you have an <laughs> extension to cover you. So did you ask Zelensky to t do that at least once so you could talk about it, Michael? <laughs> Just joking. Oh, listen, I always find a way of getting that incident in at some point. Yeah, that's all right. You'd be amazed uh, how many strangers come up to me and, and, and bring it up themselves. So it's, I'd love to change it, but I wouldn't take it back in, in that moment. The unfortunate incident from the Moscone in 2021. Back in the present day, Zelensky's levels again. It's 5-all, and we were saying earlier, it has the feel of a match which may very well go hill-hill. We're halfway to that juncture. Let's see what's going on on table three. This one very close as well. And this is live action we're watching here. Wu Kun Lin and was uh, well in front early on, but now doing the chasing and trying to make it 5-all here against Max Lechner. Yeah, just like the match we're watching, the main match, neither player can really run off for one reason or another. Like we said, Chang really hasn't put two racks together that we, you know, we're used to seeing. So he had a scratch on the break in the last. Kind of the same here in this match. Very soft swing and gets a lot out of the ball. We'll see if he tries to hold the cue ball here, which I wouldn't try to go to the rail, I don't think. Just kind of pinch it. Oh, he went to the rail easily. So there was a little more angle there. So Wu Kun Lin does indeed make it 5 all. His compatriot Chang Young Lin is also on that score. Against Rack Victor Zelinsky, who we're going to see breaking now in rack 11. What's Mr. a really intriguing contest. You know, you see how much speed in the pre-strokes right here, right? And then once he pauses, it's a lot calmer. So I think it's very easy to lose your timing uh, when you have that kind of combination of things going on and you can see kind of whiffed the one there didn't didn't hit much of it at all Watch how thin he is on the one cue ball hitting very low got a low action on the nine I think he ended up with a shot on the three though nothing easy, but it is playable hit this and that was a decel is what that was yeah and you have picked that up earlier in the match that he has a bit of a tendency to do that yeah well when you have quick pre-strokes that's really the only way you can decel because the backswing occasionally will come back a little quick nothing wrong with Alban Ocean's game today he's heading for the hill here a couple of balls away from making it 10-2 not the sort of scoreline you expect to see at this advanced stage of a world championship Attention, please yeah, very hard to separate yourself 
like Alvin has here. Probably a combination. Matias not getting the, the match he wanted, and Alvin playing another exceptional one. He likes that table, I think. So it is indeed 10-2. We may very well have our first quarter finalist in the next few minutes. I think a very big shot right here in this match. It looks fairly routine, but Chang's the type of player like most of the greats that, that don't like the close matches. They want to separate themselves. I kind of feel like the way Chang's breaking the balls, he did get a scratch in the last, and that's going to happen, but I think he has a chance to put some racks together. So three balls down on the break for Zelinski. It's done him no good in the end. He's left with a tricky three. His miss on that was his last involvement in this rack. So for the third time, Chang Yong Lin is going to lead by a single rack. And that's 6-5. Which means he's now won six of the last eight racks. And it all started when he potted that four when he was hooked in the fourth rack. And even at that early stage of the match, we're now looking back on us as quite a turning point. We suspect there may be one or two more of those to come. You could see Chang wanting his timeout, but Got to wait one more rack for that. Good time to take it, I think, somewhat in the middle of the match. And what I feel, like I said, if he come, he's breaking the balls pretty well. He's got to gamble with the cue ball, but if he comes away with some shots, I think the big man's ready to settle in. Victor Zelinski, as we were saying, came from 8-3 down to beat Moritz Neuhausen last night. And we were saying, could that be his equivalent of Shane Van Boning's big moment, his big comeback at that stage last year against Mika Eminen, from which he went on to win the title? May yet be, Rack but he's in 12. another battle here. Our current score is ahead once again of Mr. as he breaks in rack 12. Jong -Lin. Mr. Jonglin to break. See many of the Polish players in the crowd as well. Conrad Jusician, who I thought would make a run here. He's been in great form of late. Is he going to get a shot here? It's close. I think he did, so. Hold the shot clock, please. See what John Lehman's doing here with the occasionally the template when the balls get settled just right. There's a little work for the referees to remove the template. And you can see a little referee extension on the shot clock. Start the shot clock. 100 please. balls down. Zelinski has potted more of them, but the only stat which really matters is in favor of the man at the table. Yeah, big shot here. I don't think he wants to draw by the eight. Maybe. I feel like he wants to heavy stun across, kind of where he's at now. Oh, sweet swing. A little bit of awkward cueing and a little bit of an awkward path just because the five and the nine Five doesn't go to the lower left. The combination not really available. I don't think the kiss shot on the nine available. He may end up playing the five in the left side. Extension, please. We'll see how he plays the cue ball from the three to the four. Oh, 
Over on two, Mateusz Sniagotski trying to cling on. Is he going to get one back? Such a long road. Got to win nine in a row. Well, he might at least get the first of those. Back on one, that's worked out nicely for Chang Young Lin. He's not been too clear at any stage. Could this be the moment? Yeah, all kinds of action. An early missed eight ball in that match by Max Lechner. Now a return favor from Wu. Very simple eight ball missed. So the pressure mounting here for these guys. All right, he's going to pull the cue ball, a couple rails, maybe one rail for the five in the side. Wins the wreck. The good thing is he can kind of just hold there for the six. Just got to worry about queuing near the nine. You were talking there about your compatriot John Lehman removing that breaking template. Just explain to us briefly, Jeremy, what the purpose of that is, what that template is there for. Well, you know, there's slate underneath, uh, concrete underneath these tables. And as time wears on and the balls are broke more, pressure is put on the rack and little divots can be made, making it very difficult to rack the balls with the traditional triangle we've used for you know, centuries now, I guess. But so what the template has done and it's come out now maybe 15 years ago something like that and used in a lot of tournaments it just gives you a pretty much a perfect rack I mean you have to know how to use it of course and it can have some manual uh, mistakes but but uh, obviously our referees best in the world and, and it just gives us something that where the players can repeat even though it's still the break shots kind of like the driver in golf you feel like days you have it and, and it's always going to be there and then it kind of goes away hides itself and you wonder what's going on oh big shot there yeah put himself in a minor spot of bother but right back in prime position now and for the first time, he's going to have a bit of breathing space. Don't forget, Chang Yung Lin was 3-0 down in this match. Now he's just four away from the quarterfinals. He leads the local favorite, Viktor Zelinski, 7-5. Sufi in the quarterfinals later today. Chang Yung Lin got to that stage last year. And he's closing in on a repeat because for the first time in a match where he once trailed 3-0, he's more than a rack clear. It's now 7-5. Yeah, and talked about that timeout he was wanting. He had to wait one more rack, but I think that timeout and that little break is going to help Zelensky if he gets back to the table anytime soon more than either player. A little action on the nine. And this is what I was th talking about, the way he's breaking. I think he's going to settle in if he gets some shots. And Zelensky, you could see him slouch in the chair. And that's never an easy thing to see your opponent have a good starter. But Zelensky had some at the beginning and, and then missed, made a few mistakes to keep the heat on. They say it in golf all the time, you know, listening to those incredible commentators there. But it's so true here in nine ball pool, you have to stay patient. You can't let that frustration build. As easy as you think, you can just shake it off. But whenever it's your turn, it does carry. Um, so what you do in the chair has a lot to do with what happens on the table. It's, it seems like it's like that with all individual sports, Michael. Yeah, definitely patience is such an please. important thing and all sorts of things are going to get thrown at you and both in terms of your opponent dominating for sections and bits of misfortune along the way. And it's what makes the difference, isn't it? At the highest level and they can all play, but who can handle everything else that goes with it? Yeah, even in a sport like tennis, believe it or not, I was a tennis player in high school. Uh, and that's one thing that our uh, coach preached that, you know, your opponent's going to hit the lines, get some rolls, this and that. It can be very frustrating on the tennis court, believe it or not. You have to, you know, kind of buy your time and wait for your chance. 
people always talk in tennis about tightening when you get to the big moments and even if you've never played tennis you can understand what that would be and just not having the free flowing stroke with the racket yeah you start to squeeze the racket a little bit start to hit at the ball really and same thing in pool same thing in golf very similar all right i think just one rail here just kind of smooth it up the table make sure the english takes that left side check a little flat here so this is where you just got to accept a little more of a cut shot on the eight. I don't think he really works the rock with top English here. Just stun across. Remind yourself how great you are to take a little more cut on the eight than maybe desired. And he got a lot out of it. Doubt he would come back for the side on the nine. Chang, very simple with the position a lot of times. Max Lechner had gone two clear of Wu Kun Lin at 7 5. Well, it's just gone 7 6. Back here, Viktor Zelinsky must be wondering how on earth this has happened. Doesn't seem that long ago since he had a three rack advantage. But now he's going to be three behind. Chang Yong Lin only needs three more to end Zielinski's prospects of delivering a home win here. 8 5. Let's look in on table two. Alban Ocean has been a fixture in the latter stages of the World Championship in recent years, and he's closing in on getting there again after this miss from Mateusz Niagotski, attempting the bank shot on the six. You would have to say, given the way Ocean has played here, that's likely to be Sniagotsky's last involvement in this World Championship in his home country. Yeah, you would bet just the look of that six ball it wasn't the match he wanted. That's rings true when Alvin Ocean's your opponent. You're going to have to play well. Not necessarily get the rolls. And Mateus is definitely capable of, you know, overcoming and playing a better match than Alvin. Extension but you uh, certainly can't get Alvin going. It says a lot about the open competitive nature of the game that Earl Strickland's three world titles remains unmatched. Alvin Ocean got within a match of leveling with him last year. Shane Van Boning had other ideas. But he's back, wanting a share of that record again. And he's three wins away from another world title. Alvin Ocean, the first man through to the quarterfinals. He beats Mateusz Sniagotski 11-3. Yeah, class act there from Mateusz. Uh, of course, congratulating the album, but really a little sign to the fans how much he appreciates and, and has appreciated them the entire week. Probably a big part of his su success. Got an awful kiss on the cue ball there. Very similar to his first break off in this match where he scratched in that corner and now snookered on the two. Or at least maybe can't go offensive. I think he does have a look at the two. If he can get all of it, he'll kind of bang it around the table and try and play a safety. He can only get the right side. I don't know if he attacks here at all. He may push out. Sixth time he's managed to pot something off the break. Scratch the other two. Yeah, keeping it simple. I don't. He did get the snooker. Not quite as good a snooker as he wanted. Didn't want to leave. Oh, he did not get the snooker. So this is where Zelensky's got to dig in deep, make some nice tactical shots to get back to that breaking end of the table. Extension, Extension please. Yeah, got to remember Zelensky has now won only two of the last 10 racks. 
Yeah, and with some chances, that's the real problem. Yeah, absolutely. Wasn't much he could do about Chang potting the four when hooked in the fourth rack, but he's let him off a couple of times since then. Uh, he's going to catch that pink four. A little fortunate. I don't think the two passes the six, but talked about at the beginning that, of course, Zelensky capable tactically, but I would I'd definitely put Chang as a favorite in that department. I'll tell you what, this cross corner bank for these great players, uh, kind of hard to pass up on sometimes. It looks like he's going to play the safety, but I'll tell you what, if Shane Van Boning was at the table right here. Oh, he's overhit this a piece. I think Shane's attacking there with the bank cross corner with natural position on the three. Let's just take the opportunity to have a word about Shane Van Boning. You were very much in his corner last year in Milton Keynes. The two of you were going off to have meals and have chats about things, and that really helped him along the way to the world title. Have you been talking to him much the last couple of days about how he's feeling with his game and what lies ahead over the weekend? Uh, yeah, I mean, we visit every day and, and, you know, of course, I wish him all the best and we talked a little a lot more at the Derby about a few things. I told him about some matches I watched of his here recently that wouldn't be bad for him to go watch and and mainly because he takes a lot of time off during the holidays as he should because he works so hard during the year and that Derby is really the one he's coming back trying to get in form for and Stay then on to the World Championships. But yeah, we talk and uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, he's a little more, you know, like I said earlier, resolve a little more resolve about things. Very happy with what's going on. So not a whole lot needed, really. OK, he's going to give up a shot, it mm -hmm. looks like. Yes. I think three safeties in a row that haven't gone to plan. Just briefly returning to Van Boning, Jeremy, would you be the only person who would have that relationship with him or would he seek the advice of other people in the game as well? I guess you're in the position that you're obviously a very respected player. You're around the circuit and around the tournaments, but you're not still playing. So you're the ideal person to fill that role for him. Yeah, maybe. I don't I don't think Shane was ever one to really ask a whole lot from a lot of people. And, and uh, it's a relationship that has built uh, over the last few years. and. And I respect the relationship to where, you know, it's little things, right? Just little things you, you have to do with a guy like him. If he's improving or just in a little better mindset, um, it goes miles. And so, you know, maybe, maybe. But I think there are some that, that, uh, that he may, you know, at times ask an opinion on. There's definitely some competitors he respects a tremendous amount. Um, Okay, nice stun there. Way to stay aggressive, kid. Simply but. got to make this pay, hasn't he? He's given up some chances, as we've said. He was left a nice, easy starter on the two. Ooh. Seen a few in that pocket that looked touch and go, but went in. You know, that's a lot of stroke that helps open up the pocket. If you watch the overspin on the four, when you stroke the ball well, the overspin's there. And it just makes the pocket a little bigger. Eight five is getting to the sort of stage where you know if your opponent gets any further ahead, particularly one as mentally strong as Chang, you're really going to have a tall order in front of you. So this is massive. Got left the two. Let's finish the job efficiently from there. Back in touch at 8-6 as they bat out a place in the quarterfinals. Thank you. Alban Ocean is already there. Let's have a look at the final moment. Ocean through to the quarterfinals once more. Let's hear what he had to say afterwards in conversation with Phil Yates. You've made a few slow starts this week, but that was the opposite, in control very quickly. Yeah, that was I was looking for the whole week, uh, and uh, well, I was in control of the match pretty much the whole time. 
Uh, it was a nice feeling. I have put out some some nice shots, uh, won safety game. So I'm really, really happy with that performance. What was the feeling about taking on another local man, big crowd around that table? I know the way you think. I think you'd have been motivated by that. Seems like. Um, I mean, it was different yesterday. Uh, outside tables play a little bit different than the TV tables, but uh, overall, um, yeah, maybe it gives me the final push, you know, to, to bring me there where I should be for the final eight. I'm um, looking forward maybe play another Polish uh, in the quarterfinal, but I'm looking forward to it. You've been deep in the World Nine Ball Championship so many times. Knowing what to expect, that's a big help, isn't it? Of course, I mean, uh, I've been to the finals four times, but uh, you don't really think of it. You, you know what? You want to play from match to match. You want to think from ball to ball. And in the end, maybe you arrive at the final, maybe not, um, whatever. I just want to be happy with my performance. I am right now. I'm looking forward to the next match tonight, and hopefully I'll do the same. We wish you the best. Thank you. Yeah, and another Austrian, Mario He, is next up on table two. Push out, Mario He and Alban Ocean have had so many great times together in the World Cup of Pool over the years. And he is just getting started against John Mora, who ended the hopes of Jason Shaw last night. What's happened here, JJ? Yeah, nice break off, one of his best, real solid hit on the one. And now Snooker a tough rollout. I think he needs to roll out to the right side rail here, in the, you know, a little below the six. There's a there's a few different safety options there that, that, you know, I don't think Chang will miss really, but they're not easy at least. Interesting to see if the three passes the seven. I think it does. That makes a huge difference where you roll out. Just because the three may give you a little coverage. Those three successful winning breaking racks for Zelinski were the first three racks of the match. Extension, please. And it's a difficult rollout, and this is where experience comes in tremendously. And it's a little tight, but it does play the three. Awesome work there by the camera guys. And this is where, the, you know, the 22 year old, it, I like what he just looked. That's where you got to roll out right over here. Ah, he's going to try and tie up to six, maybe. Pretty good effort. And I think that's the correct place to roll out. Now there's a, a shot to where he can play off the right side of the two. Go to the side rail, top rail, and then back down behind the three seven. And not a, quite enough angle there. I don't know if he goes for this really so much. I think you got to put the two underneath the five, six, eight, and take your chances. You don't leave a gap. Uh, the two, it, the, the don't don't worry about the cue ball so much. Try and bring the cue ball back across on the right side of the table. I think the bank really uh, is all or nothing, and it's off angle. Yeah, I think Zelensky did him a favor here, putting the six in play, and and really, like I said, I would play the all-out safety here. Now he banked it short, but the problem with that is you're going to be locked up behind the 586 now. So a rare miss on a tactical situation there from Chang. And I'm really hard to believe he didn't see that with the, that's a big blockers there, the, the 586. So he's going to take away the worst of it, and he'll be lucky to be able to jump the ball after this shot. Oh, he didn't come up on the balls. That's surprising there. You're supposed to stay a little more aggressive on that safety, in my opinion, anyways. I mean, he had so much uh, room for error coming up on the 5-8 and all that, uh, that, that you got to think about the jump cue in today's game. You could, you could say there's value in both here, going for the pocketing, the two by the four. The four makes a little bit of a Attention, bigger pocket. Please. Or he may kind of bang the two around table. Yeah, 
that's what he's played. Really nice cue ball there. So we're going to see another jump. Back to back jumps. Well, the momentum has been jumping one way and then the other in the match on table three. Big swings in either direction, and the current one is running in favor of Wu Kun Lin because from 7 5 behind, he's now on three on the bounce to lead Max Lechner 8 7. And to get back to Zelensky's uh, safety. Like I said, today's game, not only just because of the equipment and but mainly how great the guys are at jumping the ball and certain safeties, you have to consider what's going on with the short cue. Should level out here, roll this in and go forward for the three in the side. I doubt he elevates the cue. This is where you just, uh, this is all, oh, he is elevating a little bit, wow. Makes the shot much tougher. Oh, how sweet was that? Pretty good sign of comfort there. Well, he seems to thrive on the later stages of matches. He seems not only to be able to make himself comfortable when getting towards the finish line, he actually seems to really produce his best in those circumstances. Just seems to love the tension and embrace it. Yeah, well, you know all about different sports, and I'm sure it's very common throughout all of those sports. It's certainly common with the best players in our game. Okay, he's got a lot of work left, though, you can see. He's got to get from a funny five to the six, so he'd like to get a little straight in on the five to draw back for a cut shot on the six. Some work from the eight to the nine. I wonder if he plays two rails here. He could cheat the pocket on the four, helping the cue ball movement. And he's overcooked it a little bit. So that straight he wanted isn't gonna be there. And the problem is he doesn't have a ton of angle. So this is gonna be an interesting decision here. Has he gotta power up and go three rails through the cue ball a little bit? He's queuing low. Is he stunning out, trying to get a cut on the six? Yeah, what a nice play that was. If he clips the six at all, he gets no offensive shot. And that's a sign of comfort, accepting this cut on the six. Or let's say more comfort. Get there. No. Well, what a big moment this could be. Well, when normally the top players don't get the ball to the hole like that, it's normally a little bit of a decel on the stroke. Victor Zelinski has not won a rack on his own break since the third rack of the match. He wasn't expecting a few moments ago in all probability to win this one. But the six left hanging in the jaws. And if it gets out here, these fans know how crucial the moment we're in in this match, and you're going to hear a big cheer. And is the momentum just starting to ebb back the other way? Zelinski had fallen 8-5 down. He'd only won two out of 10 racks at that stage, but now he's won two in a row, and he's one behind at 8-7. Let's check out some table three action. This is Max Lechner looking to draw level with Wu Kun Lin. Lechner had lost three in a row prior to this to fall behind. Really couldn't afford to let his opponent pull away from him. So they are level. Well, how big could those moments prove to be? 
Yeah, that's a rare thing you'll see from a top player. Like I said, not getting the ball to the hole. That's almost always a little let up on the swing. Bit of a cliche to say it, isn't it? But just impossible to call this one now. Chang's got the lead. Zelinsky's got a little bit of momentum. And it's been a match where you've never really Back felt you've 16. got a sense of a pattern in it. So much unexpected has happened. How do you call it? Mr. Zelinsky, to break. Yeah, you kind of feel like the break shot itself. Maybe the determining factor coming down the end. Broke well in the last. Ah, he missed the one. Is he going to get a roll with another ball? He isn't, but he didn't leave much. Now, interesting to me what Chang does from here. Push out Cole. Love to tie something up here. Don't really, don't really see uh, anything very doable on tying a ball up without really giving too much up. I mean, you can maybe come across the four, put it on the back of the six, and go over for a kick shot in between the three nine, something like that. It's not terrible, but you got to figure he's not really going to leave him any kind of shot at all. You're not going to threaten Zelensky. Or challenge him rather. He's going down the end rail. Okay. A lot of times in nine ball pool, option. you have to kind of accept you're probably going to be snookered, maybe. You're just trying to stay away from the devastating snooker early in the rack. You saw the ball's potted total going through there, and even in a match where it's close in racks, you can often have a huge gulf in terms of the total number of balls downed. One in it here. Yeah, well, Chang knew he would never get in that rollout back, that's for sure. It doesn't matter how, how good of a snooker and how much opportunity he's left Chang. And not a whole lot. Maybe the jump cue. The three's got the kick cut off, or at least somewhat. Max Lechner on the outer table. Extension, please. Trying to get that lead back. Yeah, I think he's got three balls left to go nine, eight in front. A solid hit trying to hold the cue ball, and he's going to be happy with this result. I think you got to like tap the table there. That wasn't, I mean, a little luck with the one, but what a great hit on the one to hold the cue ball. And you notice he didn't let up. That's the key to that shot. From distance, you have to make sure you hit it with a, a, a ton of speed or at least quite a bit of speed Extension, to please. hold that cue ball. Didn't leave the jump, maybe a jump kick. I think he can come three rails, maybe, underneath the one. Oh, he's looking at the jump kick. Okay, all the balls pretty much on this end. So if he gets a, a good contact here, he's got a good chance of something positive happening. This is easy to lose the rock. Oh, what a hit! What a hit! Didn't didn't get much of a reward, but pretty solid though. So Chang, a little off angle on the one here. He may have to roll this in. These types of shots are all about the training, especially when the nerves are high. They okay, shouldn't do much with the cue ball here. Chang a lot of times will use the drag stroke where you actually hit bottom English. Cue ball slides down the table and it turns over into top right about a foot or so before the cue ball. 
helps you to kill the cue ball with speed without having to roll it so softly. See there, it took off with, with bottom English and turned over well, a foot, foot and a half before the two ball. It was one of those classic situations that people who might not watch nine ball all that often, they see that and think, oh, he's almost missed that there. But that's such a key part of the game, isn't it? Playing to almost miss it, yeah. to use the full width of the pocket to give you the angle you need for position. And you understand certain types of shots and strokes uh, open the pocket anyways. So, you know, why try to be so perfect? And the thing that opens the pocket the most is the stroke itself. When you get jabby, that's when the balls want to jaw up. Okay, he's got to decide. He can draw to either side, I think. Uh, he kind of punched it. He tried to come to the left side, and he stayed pretty aggressive the entire match. We'll see what he decides here. And he's got to track this some, what would that be? Somewhere around 20 feet. <laughs> up and down the table. I don't, unless he's going to spin it in with left English, that may be the shot. But if he's flat cutting it, he's got to go three rails up and down. He's obviously using a lot of left side. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Nothing wrong with the outcome. The I'm sorry, Michael. Go ahead. No, that was all I was going to say. Oh, it's one thing to get the snooker, but to get the snooker like this, cutting off a, um, a doable kick shot anyways. And the thin cuts have not been Chang's friend in this match. I can think of four of them he's missed already. A two ball, four ball, six ball, he didn't get to the hole, and now yeah. another five ball. Yeah, he's used his extension, so... Oh, he Bell. left himself tied up in knots there. He's so angry with himself. And look at this, ball in hand, 5-8 combination. No, you can place anywhere you want. Oh, that's where... Start shot clock, please. Using the extension early or, or maybe not in the right situation. Yeah, don't be afraid to use it, but use it at the right time. I'll tell you what, something happened there that was very questionable. And I, I don't know, maybe something that needs to be addressed later on, but when he turned his head, uh, you know, the guys moved the, the cue, cue ball with the cue stick with ball in hand a lot. Yeah. But when he turned his head, he incidentally hit the cue ball with a stick. With the tip? With the cue, it doesn't with, matter. With the cue, yeah, okay. It doesn't okay, matter yeah. whether it's the tip, whatever. I mean, whether it's a decision foul or not, does not matter what piece of the cue hits it, but but he was definitely not addressing it, trying to move it, you know what I mean? His, yeah, yeah, his yeah. head was turned, yeah, yeah. so. So maybe it needs to be like a drop in golf, where if, when you call a referee and they say ball in play, so from that point on, the drop has happened. Absolutely. Maybe we need to introduce something like that here to well, clarify. Well, I'm just curious what John or, or any of the great referees we have, Brendan, doesn't matter. Uh, would feel about that. Yeah. It's not something I've seen hardly ever. Yeah, very good point. But it did happen there. Ooh, look at this speed here. Ooh. Now, I don't know if this got playable or not. Yes, it did. And I, I don't know if we'll be able to get a replay on that. Uh, what did happen, and like I said, when he did get ball in hand. But yeah. it was a funny little exchange, in my opinion. Definitely worth having a look at that between racks if we can. So, yet another big moment. Zelinski got himself in all kinds of trouble with the shot clock. Had to rush. Left ball in hand. Chang Yung Lin is two racks away from the quarterfinals now. It's 9 7. Many stories, big and small, will be written on this Saturday in Kielsa at the World Pool Championship. And we saw this incident that you were referring to, Jeremy, towards the end of that previous rack. So, tell us what you've seen here. Well, this is. No, that's not part of it, actually. We'll hopefully get another look. Actually, when he first gets ball in hand, not here,
when, when he first gets it and him and John Lehman are close to each other, that's when he he accidentally hits the cue, cue ball with the cue stick. Now, there was no intent of, like, really playing the shot. He wasn't ready to play the shot, didn't have the cue ball where he wanted. To break. So it could be argued that it was a foul stroke. Could be argued is what I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious what the real situation is. Uh, I'm not so, I don't know if John really saw it. Uh, you know, it wasn't obvious to anyone really. And, and I'm pretty sure that's what I saw. We'll see later on. Yeah, so it's a, a bit, bit a, before that, a yeah, bit before. And a bit of a gray area. When exactly has the ball been placed and put in play? Anyway, bottom line, it's 9-7. has worst break off of the match besides a few unfortunate scratches push, push out called difficult rollout this is with the 7-5 there. You almost have to put them on the rail no matter what, which is most of the time when you're rolling out. You can't allow them the bottom of the cue ball here. Okay, he's going to roll out to a piece there. Yeah, that one dry break from Chang there in addition to those two scratches earlier. Yeah, if you like close matches, we have one here and yeah. another on the other table at nine apiece. Between Wu and Max Lechner. And that just keeps swinging one way and the other. And Lechner was 7 option. 5 up. Wu Kun Lin went 8 7 in front. Lechner led 9 8. And now, as you say, it's 9 each. Mario He, by the way, 2 0 up. Still very early stages against John Mora. Yeah, and I think that's a guy that's built a lot of momentum. Hard not to take this with the 5 7 the way they are to play the one on the left side rail trying to use the five seven with the cue ball on the right side rail. I think that's the shot he'll play. I guess he could go trying to move the one further up table. I think that's a little dangerous. I like a little separation. Well, he went with the more aggressive one. So. Oh, and he did real well. Now, the thing about this, though, is you leave the one, and he's a little upset. The one got by the eight and nine. He's like, how did that happen? But now he leaves him a little more options on the kick with the grouping of the two, eight, and nine near the one. He's looking to go two rails Attention, and kind of chip the one ball lightly. That one there could get the devastating snooker or a very good snooker, but also might have some issues if he lets up on the stroke a little bit, which is easy to do. And he might not get a rail. Oh, he hit it nice. Good shot. I think he left a sliver of the one, but you still got to appreciate the effort. That's the sort of shot which will really test your nerve at the end of what is, after all, one of the very biggest matches of his young life so far. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always very stressful when you play safeties Attention, and you please. leave the object ball near the nine. Not only because of kick shots, you never know if the one's going to dress up and, and kind of get wired on the nine. So he doesn't have a lot of the one to really do a whole, whole lot. Maybe just drift the cue ball near the seven and five. Very nice. May I have a piece of this one ball? Oh, it's very close. Don't think he'll take on the jump shot. Pink four is just too far away to really control things. He may let these fly a little bit. Oh, wow, he missed it. 
Oh, is he going to get it on the way back? He is, but... But he's left it. The slumped shoulders tell quite a story. And a young man whose dream of winning the World Championship on home territory could be slipping away. not going to give up made the biggest comeback I think of this year's event at least so far last night just to get to this final 16. Just to clarify he did catch the one but of course it's ball in hand because I have to hit a rail. Yeah, a little different than the snooker rules. You have to either pocket a ball after contact or drive the cue ball or another object ball to a rail. Okay, is he going to draw this, kind of cheat the pocket to draw the cue ball in somewhat of a straight line back for the pink four on the side? If he goes forward, he's got to kind of smooth the ball, so he's going to kind of cheat the pocket a little bit. Okay, he'll use the eight here to hold the cue ball. Now, over on table three. This is live action, 9 all between Max Lechner and Wu Kun Lin. We're going to see the lead. Moving to one player or the other yet again. Really has swung back and forth all the way through. Yeah, and two of Chinese Taipei finest trying to get into position to get the job done and move on to the final eight. Both get to the hill within a few minutes of each other. John Mora has won the third rack. So it trails 2-1 now against Mario He. Oh, and a ton of heart the Canadian showed last night and a comeback win. And not only a comeback win, but the quality of outs he made at the end were uh, something special. Oh, yeah. Jason Shaw really let him off the hook. But as you say, he had to... Still get the job done, and he did. Wu Kun Lin has got the job done in that rack, so he's first to the hill. And that wonderful match on table three. Remember all the table two and three action throughout the championship, available on the Matchroom YouTube channels. Back to the main table. Yeah, that was the issue with that one, just to clarify. He did catch it on the way back, but nowhere near enough pace to force the one to the cushion. That was why it was ball in hand. Back in the present moment, Chang Young Lin got pulled back to 8-7 after an eventful 15th rack. He's on the brink of going three clear once again, as he was at 8-5. He is again now, and this time it takes him to the hill. Chang Young Lin Former World Championship finalist, got to the quarters last year. He's on the brink of getting there again. This is table two, Mario He, I was talking to you about, one of three Austrians in this round. Albin Ocean already through. Max Lechner, a rack away from going out, but still in with a very good chance of winning that match. On table three, just needs to take the last two racks. Mario He in the early stages. His match. This is going on right now. Sorry, Jeremy. So Go just ahead. to clarify, these are live pictures. So looking for 3-1 here. Yeah, and a guy who's played all kinds of matches in this tournament so far. He's had a loss early. Had to fight back from some deficits. Looking to play his best pool and get a little better starts, right? Been behind quite a bit. Okay. 
Wu has had his best break off so far against Lechner making three balls on the break. But he's got a tough shot on the three to try and probably advance if he buries it. How about Austria though carrying three into the final 16. Yeah, they had four starting out. Three of them got to the last 64, and as you say, all three of those still standing. Mario He went to the loser side early in the championship. Chang Yong Lin was one rack away from being sent there by Duong Kwok Wang Hang. But now he's one rack away from a place in the quarterfinals. Mario He wins the rack. You gotta like that. His last break of the match, and he did not back off. Really couldn't have asked for it to turn out any better than that. Yeah, you can see a rare emotion a little bit, really pressing for this shot on the two, like open up one time, and it has. And really just gotta go forward here off the two. Wu as well trying to win. He did bury that tough three ball, but it looks like a safety coming there. A lot of work still, though, with the 6 8. That's for sure. Good thing for him, the 5 is near, so maybe the combination not so bad. Maybe some type of short side position on the 6. All right, he held for a lot of angle here, so it'd be interested to see if he goes with a high ball by the 9. Or if he try to, tries to kind of pull the cue ball a couple rails with a low right English, I think it's going to be a high ball. Usually very efficient with his cue ball and decisions. All right, he wanted to fall underneath this. That way he has a natural angle to come across. And this is where he's got to make his decision. How am I going to play the six? Attention, please. Suddenly seeing so much emotion, so much body language from Chang Yong Lin. Let's keep an eye on table three as well, though, because this could finish in the next few moments. Wu Kun Lin, 10-9 in front of Max Lechner. With a chance to finish this off, Lechner has been in the quarterfinals the last two years. On the brink of falling one round short of that this time. Man, it was a very scrappy match. It seemed like neither player could really run a ton of racks, whether that had been lack of shots after the break. And a lot of safety battles, jump cues being used very much. May get a double kiss on the six here, playing this combination. We'll see. He's going forward with the cue ball. Like that. A lot of the players will play the double kiss. That way they contain both the cue ball and the six. You really could see these two matches. The two compatriots finishing just about simultaneously. Yeah. Wu Kun Lin has been one of the real stories of this world championship, and it's a story which is going to continue into a quarter final, which may see him face the reigning champion of the world, Shane Van Boning. Wu Kun Lin, the winner over Max Lechner by 11 racks to nine. Back to the main table. It looks as though Sebastian Bakowski is going to be the last surviving home player in Poland's staging of the World Championship. Viktor Zielinski 
led 3-0, got off to an absolute dream start in this last 16 encounter. But he won only two of the next 10. He did take a couple to close to 8-7. But with three in a row, Chang Yonglin has ended Victor Zielinski's dream. Chang is the winner by 11 racks to seven. He's through to the quarterfinals once again.